Hi, MOPS, San Luis Obispo. Um, my name is Corinne Edmonds, and I'm a pediatric sleep consultant. I was supposed to come speak with you all uh, in April and give you a presentation at one of your MOPS meetings, and I was really bummed out that I didn't get to come see you all. I've spoken at the MOPS in Paso Robles for a number of years, but haven't ever been able to make it to slow, so I was really excited to come meet you all, but you know, God has different plans. So hopefully I'll get to see you all maybe in the fall, I'll be able to make it down to see you all. So um, I was asked to do a little recording. So um, uh, I was hoping that I would get some questions from you guys so I could answer specific questions or concerns you were having about your little one's sleep, but nobody submitted any questions. So I will just go ahead and give you just like a quick little rundown um, on kind of some of my top sleep topics and questions. Uh, and then please feel free to join me though on my Facebook page for my live question and answers. So hopefully this will spark some questions um, or maybe you just didn't get your question in on time. Um, and so please join me on my Facebook page. My business Facebook page is called Meet You in Dreamland. And every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m., I do a free question and answer from 7 to 8 p.m. So it's a great time to pop on and get your questions answered. Um, but anyways, uh, let's break down baby sleep a little bit. So uh, as our babies grow um, and we're watching them for developmental and physical milestones, our babies also have sleep milestones as well. And it's important to know uh, when these are, when they hit, and kind of what we can do to help get our little ones through them. So when our babies are born um, and they're in the womb, they are getting cues from our body clock. So when our body releases some melatonin, they get some of that and so on. And that's kind of how they roll for nine months. Then they're born and their body clock isn't getting any hints or tips from us anymore. So they're kind of free flying. And that's why there are no predictable patterns or rhythms to newborn sleep. Uh, so then the first sleep milestone that we see happens between six to eight weeks of age. Between six and eight weeks of age is what we, uh, it's called organized nighttime sleep. So what it really means is that our babies can now tell the difference between day and night, right? So a lot of times you will hear parents um, talk about how their baby has their days and nights mixed up. Well, all newborns do. They just kind of eat and sleep around the clock and that's pretty typical. But around six to eight weeks is when we get that first milestone. And it's what we call organized nighttime sleep. Now they can tell the difference between day and night. And usually this is also when we start seeing one longer chunk of sleep emerge for babies. Uh, this chunk of sleep can be anywhere between three and eight hours. I find usually it's somewhere between four to six is kind of the average. Uh, and usually it'll be in the early evening hours. Every once in a while you'll see a baby who does it like in the afternoon and it'll kind of drift into the evening hours, but usually it's in like the early evening hours. Um, so that's our first milestone. Then our next one isn't until four months, and that's the big daddy of sleep milestones, right? It's infamously known as the four-month sleep regression, and it's not really so much a regression as it is a milestone. So um, during this milestone, our babies now have what's called organized daytime sleep. So at six to eight weeks, we had organized nighttime sleep. Um, but at that point, naps are still going to be hit and miss. There's going to be no predictable patterns or rhythms, anything like that. But move over to four months. Now we've got organized daytime sleep. And this is when we can start helping our babies get on a more predictable nap pattern, rhythm, or routine. So usually starting at four to five months, you'll see either three or four naps a day. Usually by about five and a half, six months, definitely by six months, you should be on a fairly consistent and solid three nap a day schedule. Then that third nap will go away anywhere between six and nine months of age. So some babies take it solidly till nine months. Other babies are already getting rid of it at around six months. Um, so when you lose that third nap somewhere between six and nine months of age, then you'll hold on to two naps for a little while. You'll have a morning nap that usually starts around 8.30, 9-ish, and you'll have an afternoon nap that starts usually kind of shortly after lunch, usually somewhere between 12.30 and 1. Then um, bedtime for babies can be anywhere between 6 
and 7.30, sometimes even as early as 5, honestly. So bedtimes can be kind of anywhere between like 5.30 to 7.30 um, for babies this age. And the reason for that is because we actually want our bedtimes to be flexible depending on how our baby's day was and how their naps were. So I always like to gauge bedtimes by looking at, um, by looking at our wake times. So I like naps to be predictable, set in stone time-wise. I like bedtime to be a little flexible, depending on how the day was. So that'll make your bedtime ebb and flow a little bit, and that's okay. So some people get really nervous that they don't have this really predictable, you know, down pat solid bedtime, but it's okay for it to ebb and flow because if our babies took, you know, a poor day of naps, we want to help them make up for that sleep. So. Anyways, you're on two naps a day, you'll drop to one nap somewhere between 14 and 18 months of age. Um, this is a fairly big transition for kiddos. I find that it's the hardest transition, nap transition of the bunch, dropping down from two to one. Um, when you do that, the morning nap goes away and it's the afternoon nap that you will keep. And usually that nap will fall anywhere between 12 and one o'clock. So most families can kind of find a sweet spot within there for their kiddos. Um, then you'll hold on one nap until your little one is anywhere between three and four years of age. So you'll keep naps for a while. Um, I find the average is to lose naps during that third year of life. So when they turn three all the way up to four. Now, some kids are definitely still napping at four years of age and some all the way up to even five. But I, I find most of the time kiddos will lose it in that third year. Uh, nap refusals with toddlers, two-year-olds, is definitely something that we see. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're ready to give up their nap yet, though. So I would encourage families who are struggling with nap times for their two-year-olds to keep hanging in there and persevering. I always like to say that we can't force our children to sleep, but we provide the opportunity. And so providing them that opportunity to nap every day is really important because we all know that nap time is just as much for mom as it is for baby. So it's still good to institute that time every day. I find with toddlers, you'll see them refuse naps or go on a nap strike for a little while. Sometimes it's just them testing us because that's a two-year-old's job. And sometimes I find it can be related to a developmental milestone. And for toddlers, that's usually um, language first or sometimes even imaginary play is starting to slowly enter in. So uh, those things can just put their little brains into overdrive, especially when we put them in a dark, quiet environment, their little brains just come alive. So I would still, though, like I said, keep offering that nap. And then even when your child is in the range to drop naps, I still think it's important for parents to have that set, um, that set quiet time during the day. Uh, even if they're not napping, I find that just having the chance to quiet their uh, body and their mind a little bit is really helpful, um, especially if this is like your first child or, or you have younger children. It's important that they still stay within the family rhythm of quiet or nap times during the day because if they have younger siblings or if you're planning to have more children later, you still want them to be in the habit of having that quiet time during the day. Um, so if they have a sibling that needs to sleep, that can still happen. Um, I'll also touch briefly on sleep environment because we are into spring and it's been really warm lately and we're coming into summer soon. Uh, and I find a lot of times we have to give a little bit of attention to our sleep environment in the spring and summer. So there's really actually nothing super fancy that you need for a sleep environment. I always recommend um, that a room be nice and dark. Uh, honestly, as dark as you can get it. And uh, the reason for that is because we all sleep because of melatonin. And melatonin is our sleepy hormone. And it is located actually in our brain right behind our optic nerve. So it's right behind our eyes and our brain. And that's where our melatonin is produced. And melatonin is actually nicknamed the vampire hormone because it only comes out in the dark. So the darker our sleep environment, the more melatonin our body will release. So during the day, we have all this light coming in from windows and, and screens and lights on in our home, and that goes into our eyes, and it suppresses the melatonin. So it signals to the brain, hey, it's daytime. We don't want to produce melatonin right now. 
And so it suppresses, it suppresses it. Well, as the evening hours come and it gets, the lights start getting dimmer, um, it starts getting darker outside, so it starts signaling to the body, oh, it's getting dimmer, it's getting darker, we need to think about producing melatonin now. And so I love for families to shut off screens about an hour before uh, bedtime. So that includes things like TV, um, tablets, phones, anything like that. Because the tricky thing with tablets and screens is that we actually stare directly into them. Uh, so that kind of, it even increases the light even more. You know, when we've got just ambient light around us, that's fine. We're in the light and our eyes are taking that in. But when we look at screens, we are actually just staring right into them. Um, and some people just, it's, their body has a hard time kind of bouncing back from that. So shut off screens about an hour before bedtime. And then for your kiddo's room, I would have it nice and dark. During your bedtime routine, have it be dim. So if you have a dimmer on their light, if you've got a soft lamp you can turn on, have that on. And then when you shut off the light, when you're checking them in, when you're leaving the room, make sure that room is dark. So if you have some blackout curtains, that's great. Um, even if you have shades or uh, blinds that are blackout, a lot of times you'll still get a big, get this like, edging around the window that's still really dark. So uh, you can either get curtains to put over that. Some people will do quick tricks where they can like pop cardboard um, behind the shade or the blind. And then that way you can just pop it in and out when you want. Uh, I used to put actually black contact paper on my kiddos windows. I'm sure we look like a crack house in the neighborhood, but you know, it was totally worth it for sleep. Um, and it was easy. And then when you know, I would usually do it for like a season and then I would just, you just peel it right off and it was, wasn't a big deal. So any way that you can get that room dark. Also watch under the doors. A lot of times, especially if you have hardwood floors in your homes, uh, a lot of times doors are cut for carpet. So they're cut higher and that leaves like a big gaping, you know, light. And so you can get either like draft protectors or their Home Depot sells like little, um, things that you can like adhere to the bottom of the door so it helps block that out. You can shove a towel down there. Um, so yeah, nice and dark. I would also encourage parents to kind of block out any electronics that you have in the room. So if you've got, if you have like a monitor in there, if you've got white warmers, things like that, just get a little tiny piece of like dark electrical tape and put it over that because we don't want our kiddos to hyper focus or fixate on these little, you know, lights in the room. Uh, and then use some white noise. I think white noise is great. It's not essential for healthy sleep, but it's definitely helpful, um, especially because you want to be able to live life around the house when your kiddo is sleeping. Uh, and again, with siblings, you know, if we've got younger siblings, older siblings, we, you know, might have potential noise from them. And then you never know when the neighbor's dog's going to start barking. So it's great to have that white noise. Um, I always encourage parents for the volume of white noise, you want it to sound like what it sounds like when you're in the shower, right? So we've got the shower running, we're, you know, taking our shower and, and we hear all that water running. That's the volume at what you want the room to be at. So it doesn't need to be super loud, um, but it doesn't need to be super soft either. You know, you can have it at a, at a decent clip. Um, and then room temp, you know, pediatricians recommend anywhere between 68 and 71 degrees is the quote ideal room temp. Uh, and that would be like in a medium weight pajama. Now, a lot of us, I know, especially homes in slow, I lived in slow for a while, don't have air conditioning. So it's hard to get that to be perfect. So I always say kind of use that as your jumping off point. So between 68 and 71 degrees in a medium weight sleeper. If your house gets warmer than that, go ahead and dress them cooler than that. If your house, is, you know, in the winter time, um, if your house is going to get colder at night, then go ahead and bundle them up a little bit more, especially in the fall or winter. Uh, and so you can watch that, just, you know, make them comfortable and even having like a fan in the room just for some air circulation can help. But again, nothing, you just don't really need anything fancy in your sleep environment. There's a lot of gimmicky things out there. Uh, and honestly, most of them you just don't need. So uh, that is kind of a, a plug for the sleep environment. But Anyways, I really hope that you guys found this helpful, and I know you guys probably, I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there, and I wish um, I, I, you know, could know what they are and answer them for you, so please jump in on my Thursday night Q&As, because I'm happy to answer anyone's questions. Uh, I'm also always taking clients, uh, and honestly, right now is a great time to work on your kiddo's sleep. You know, we're all kind of 
cooped up at home or at least sticking really close to home. And so this is a great opportunity to jump in. If you've kind of been on the fence about working on your kiddos' sleep, now is a great time to do it. Because usually I encourage people to stick a little closer to home for about two weeks when you're really, you know, um, purposely working on your kiddos' sleep. And so this is a golden opportunity to kind of do it. You know, again, we're forced to stay closer to home. So this is, you know, I mean, you can still go out and do miscellaneous, but uh, this is a great time. So if you've been on the fence, I would encourage you to consider doing it now. And then when we are, you know, able to go out, you will have taken care of this and you can feel really, you know, proud about yourself and all of the new things that you guys accomplished. So um, anyways, it was great. Um, getting to, I guess, kind of chat at you guys in the video. Um, I hope it was helpful. Again, uh, check out my Facebook page, Meet You in Dreamland. My website has all of my packages listed, meetyouindreamland.com. And you can also email me at uh, meetyouindreamland at gmail.com. So anyways, you guys, um, I, I am praying for all of you. I said a prayer before I started this that this would be helpful for everyone. And I'm just praying that you guys are hanging in there with all this. I know these are hard times, um, but we have a great God. And I pray that you guys, um, you know, will hang in there. So thanks for asking me. And I hope I can see you all in person soon. Have a good evening. Bye.